I am so happy that you're here with us. Good morning, Jasmine. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing fabulous today. It's Friday. It's a little hot out there today, where, but where are you we're going to make it through. Where are you looking? I'm in Atlanta. <gasps> So it's been very humid. It's been rainy and just, and we have like one or two days of sunshine and it's almost like you're in the belly of like a volcano. It is so hot and humid. <laughs> um, so I'd rather stay indoors. It's so crazy. Like in the winter, we're like, oh, we want it to be warm and, you know, summer. And then in the summer, we're like dying. Yes. So uh, other than that, um, you know, everything's great. Wow. So you're on the East Coast. Um yeah, I was just talking about that with my son yesterday. My son's 15. And I'm like, that heat in the East Coast is something else. You get sticky. I feel like a gummy bear. You can't breathe. You're like, like, it's just hard to breathe just from the humidity, you know, like on your lungs. Were you, were you raised over there? So I pretty much. So I'm originally from L.A., um, I was, I was there until I want to say I was probably like seven or something or eight. So my parents got divorced and we moved around a lot with my mom and my younger brother. Um, and then she kind of, you know, wanted to like, most people that kind of go through divorce, they want to kind of start all over, try to figure out what, it, you know, um, what they're going to do with their life. And my mom had one relative here that she hadn't seen in like 15 years. And um, she's like, I just need to, I need to get away, made a phone call. And then all of a sudden we're in Atlanta. Um, I remember one of my first memories of Atlanta, it was like the Olympics of 96. So at least I know I've been here that long. Wow. Um, uh, it's, been, it's been a while. Oh my God. <laughs> Have you ever thought of coming back to the West Coast, girl? Even though you were really I, little, probably, to remember yeah. it. I was really little and a lot of the memories I have are like family parties and just kind of growing up in that um you know, you go outside and until your parents call you to go back inside and you're out with you know, your friends and your neighborhoods and there's a party every weekend. And, you know, so I remember a lot. I remember the earthquakes that I remember. I was like traumatized by those. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, I re yeah, so I was really young and I have been to California since oh, I think once since um, I was young and I was 20 three so it's been a while um i know i was like 26 i'm sorry it, 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 i don't know it was around that age 20s. Was like 20, <laughs> and um and yeah i i it's a really crazy story because i after my parents got divorced i kind of lost contact with my father and so you know, we all moved on with our lives. I ended up, uh, I got married really young and divorced really young. And I do want to say it was my 23rd birthday and I received a letter in the mail and it was from my father. And I honestly just didn't even think like no one had heard from him or knew about him or anything. And it was like one of those moments where I had, um, a lot to say <laughs> and uh, uh, you know yes. I wanted to have a lot of questions and a lot of things um to say and so like a crazy person I got on a plane with my daughter who at the time was six I want to say and um my brother and we just went to California and went to go meet our family and um like my dad's side of the family and that was that was an interesting experience for sure, uh, because it's just some, it's not only like the family I didn't really grow up with, but they were, they're also from a different part of like Mexico than my mom is. And um, they're from the same state, but just like my mom's more coastal and my dad's more like, vengeful, you know, so um I remember walking in and because my dad like had this big like welcome home party for us and stuff. And I was like, I told my brother, I was like, oh my God, like, this is what I remember growing up. It was like every, like the whole family and on my mom's side, we do have a big family, but we don't, mm -hmm. we're all really spread out. And my dad's family's very like kind of all close together. They all live like near each other and stuff like that. So um, that was a definitely like interesting experience. But I can tell you, and I might have gone maybe one other time, but I remember just, 
And also it could be because I was with my dad hanging out with him. Cause I remember we went to Vegas and stuff and it's not fun going to Vegas with your like parents. Um, <laughs> at least not when you're younger, you know, I want to you know, it's not stuff, cool. So. That's for sure. It's not cool. It's not cool. Um, but I, it just, I didn't feel like it was home. You know, I felt mm-hmm. still very, um, the culture there is really different than Atlanta as well. Growing up Very here, I, I just kind of really disconnected a lot with some of those roots, which is also kind of why I started Bicaya and how a lot of my products kind of just, I, I, I use all those memories to create things that just help me, remind me of the good things, right? And so it was just, I really felt out of place. I do want to go back. I actually reached out to him a few weeks ago and I was like, you know, I, I, I kind of want to come back to California. I do have a lot of... Um, you know, different uh, retail partners out there. So I would love to come and visit them as well and maybe show him like, hey, this is where, you know, where we are at and what I've been doing. And, um, but yeah, I would love to go back. Hopefully that's in the card sometime in the near, near future for sure. But yeah, right now I've kind of been in Atlanta since um, I was really young and this is kind of my new home. Yes. And you know, that makes sense because you were so young when you left and you don't have that connection with your dad for whatever for whatever reason. Things happen for many reasons, right? Um, but I'm just glad that you were able to connect with him. And now that you're like, okay, let's kind of try it again. Because as we grow older, sometimes we understand things differently or we perceive things differently. Um, and it's very interesting because your brand, Becalia which girl i love i am obsessed with your themes i'm obsessed with all the range of products that you offer but something that really caught my attention was how family oriented you are and as soon as i clicked on your website to like check out what other products you had because the store here in san diego if you guys are in san diego artalexia my spot that's my plug for many many brands yes girl that's like my sunday routine like holy grail i have to go to artalexia and like get what i love i can't wait to visit them in person for sure i want to like i see the pictures and everything and i'm like oh they just you know they they just embody everything that is our culture and our heritage and our traditions They like, really I do. Love I love how they, you know, they decorate and it's just, it's amazing. So the first time I, I, I walked in there, I actually started crying. Like that's how, that's how um, amazing it was. I started crying because the, the smell, the items, like I felt like I was at my grandma's house again, mi abuelita. Uh-huh. And I had just lost my grandma too, due to COVID. So, um, you know that was very emotional for me so i literally and the the owner she is amazing and she's such a beautiful person and so i was like i was like i'm so sorry but this is just so emotional for me and like i love this like like my inner child heals every time every Uh sunday that i go I go on Sundays. So that's just part of my routine. I go to Artelexia and I saw your products and I was like, I want to know more. And as soon as I clicked your website, I was like, oh, my God, I'm in love. Like, I'm in love. They need to carry the full on brand. Like, I want everything that's on the on the website. Um, And I really wanted to get to know you because I'm like, how did you come up with this amazing brand and it just looks so organic that it instantly draws you know i'm sure it's gonna draw people you know every time that they come across your products how did you when did it start yeah it's been an evolution the calia has definitely been an evolution um when i started the calia i did it i've always i've always had like the entrepreneurial spirit and you know bone like i come from a family of entrepreneurs my mom my grandmother my uncles everyone has in my family pretty much has owned their own business at some point in time and um 
I mean, I remember as a young kid being a little hustler. I would, you know, look at those. Remember the highlight magazines? Yes. I yes. Girl. I would be like, 100 ways this summer to make money. I did yes. the lemonade stand. I tried to babysit. I did it all just to be able to get enough money to buy my Gloria Trevi cassette from the guy <laughs> walking down the street with all the cassette tapes. You remember those days? Yes, girl. You know, like, uh, I wanted to get my pelo suelto on. But it was just, um, I started there, I think. And then, you know, life kind of got in the way. And I said, I got married really young and divorced and then started a new career. And I really love my career. And I, and, um, yeah, I kind of went into corporate and, and like the legal field and I really loved it for a long time, but I always had that, like, what if, or I want my own or when, when am I going to do this? Right. And so, um, I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone, just kind of going through my spiel again. And she said, <laughs> Mira, like I'm done hearing about this. Like you want to start a business and it's been how many years? And she said, time is going to go by anyways. So you either start now or you're going to wonder what if, you know, in the next five, 10 years, you know, so, um, we all need I friends learned. like that. I we know, all need I know. friends like that. Yes. <laughs> and I hung up the phone and I literally just started like jotting down like, okay, I'm going to do this. And by that weekend, I had like my business name. It registered. Like I just what was like, I'm going to do it. I just need to do it. Pull off the bandaid and then I'll figure everything out. And that's pretty much what I did. I, um, I had like three different things that I kind of wanted to dabble in, but I also still really, really pretty much wanted to continue my career. So it was like, what can I do while doing both? And so um, I started into skincare and um, because I would kind of make my own products because I had really dry skin, very sensitive skin. And I tried all the drugstore stuff and all the Sephora stuff and I couldn't mm -hmm. find it that was for me. Um, and so I kind of started uh, dabbling into natural ingredients and what can we really use around our kitchen or home or, you know, stuff to kind of um, use it for our own benefit. And so I made my own kind of concoction and I had been using it for a while. And so I eventually hired a manufacturer and a chemist to help me with, all, with the creating my first product. And as I from the name to like the first product name, as I was creating it at first, I was just really wanted to be intentional about it being really clean, natural products and really trying to um, make people just be very happy and content with the, their natural beauty. Right. And what really is going to make this glow without having to put really harsh chemicals or anything that is like these kind of quick fix miracle, like, you know, products that, don't really work. And then also I realized that I myself didn't have a lot of knowledge as much as I thought I had a lot of knowledge in skincare. I didn't. And a lot of my friends and other people I knew didn't either. Some people were like, well, I just wash my face with water or I don't even wash my face or, you know, and I'm <laughs> yeah. like, okay, what is happening? <laughs> or you just walk um, into Sephora and ask them for a routine and they give you some random routine and they're not and skin it's experts. overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's overwhelming. And I was a busy mom. And so I created my first product, which was a colada. Um, cleanser and it was a non-foaming cleanser that was kind of acted like an all-in-one so it helped you remove your makeup it was really gentle on your skin but it just gives you a really nice plumping vibrant like afterglow right and, and it's very moisturizing especially if you have really dry skin and that was our colada because it, it's a scented very from a natural coconut scent and it just reminded me of all these ingredients into like a colada like a milkshake almost right and so that was kind of how i started that and um after spending a lot of money on that, <laughs> um, I went to I started taking some formulation classes and just started learning a little bit more and creating my own products and making them in house myself. So that's kind of how the evolution of that was. Okay. Yeah, and so um, like I said, I went to form to I took some formulation courses and just started making my own products. And as I was creating products, I realized that. The products I was making unintentionally were 
like everything rep was representing like where I came from and it was a memory or it was just something that I wanted to remember that just made me feel good inside. Um, growing up in Atlanta, away from my family, it was really hard because it was just my mom and my brothers, right? And my family was either in California or was in Texas or in Mexico. And for a long time after we moved to Atlanta, I we didn't get an opportunity to really visit or, you know, as my mom was kind of building, rebuilding her life and, and she was here on her own. So it took some time. And um, I just felt really much alone here. Um, like I said, I didn't have much family and, you know, we didn't have cell phones back then or the yeah, internet or girl. social media. So I remember have, like writing letters and stuff. Oh my gosh, it ages me. But like, it just, you know, I, it was just really hard. And here I was, uh, I grew up within the city of Atlanta when we first moved here. And even that in itself, we I did have a lot of um, Latino friends that I would just really try to just kind of, you know, juntarme con ellos and, you know, uh, but once we moved, my, the city started getting a little rough. So she moved us out into uh, the suburbs, which to me was literally the country because I was used to not having to like, <laughs> you have a car, we would walk everywhere. We would take, you know, um, public transportation. And now we were in a place that just, that wasn't the case. And then, um, so I moved to a new high school. I was already angry because she moved me away from my friends and stuff. Oh. And then I went to a high school that, had, I was like one of five Latinos and it was a huge, huge culture shock um, for me. And it felt even lonelier. And then I, you know, kind of grew up in my career. I, and, and that was just, I didn't have to ever speak Spanish and doing what I was doing before. I didn't really, um, I, I had a few friends, um, that were Latinas, but it wasn't like what I was surrounded with every day. So I feel like I kind of really got disconnected. And in my circles with my, you know, Latina friends, I was, you know, they would say either you're like the whitest Mexican I ever know, or you're too whitewashed. Or, <laughs> and so I never felt like Latina enough. And then ni around de my... Ni de other, ni de yeah, yeah. 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 And it was really hard, you know, trying to find my own place. And I think um, after a while, it was just you kind of assimilate to your surroundings and you, um, you, you just modify the way that you are um, living and the way that you're thinking just because of what's in your environment. I mean, I think it's just kind of natural for that force to take place. Um, and I was in a really great place in my career. I was like really going places and I took that leap of faith and started this business and it just kind of grew really really fast and um so when did you start what was the year that you actually started so I started in 2018 um so it's my fifth year in business and uh the first couple years it literally was like I got it because yes, it was just girl crazy um y lo que te I, falta yeah. y lo que te oh, falta mujer you it still, is a journey for sure it is yes. a journey <laughs> and you know um i would love to touch on what you just said i think i admire your mom so much for it always it almost seems because we can just oversee it and be like, oh, my God, that was a tough time for me in my life and your perspective. Right. But as a mom, I admire her for taking those big steps. Oh, man. And taking She's those. Amazing. Yes. Because, girl, she was like, this neighborhood's not good anymore. Let's find you somewhere else. I don't want to be around this environment anymore. Let's go somewhere else. And those are tough decisions that sometimes as parents, yeah. we guilt trip ourselves, right? I'm sure, yeah. you know, maybe now in conversations that you have with your mom, she's like, oh, I didn't know how that was going to turn out. And, you know, she's oh, letting yeah. you know I mean, a different perspective. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm really, uh, I really look up to her and her strength and in her wisdom and everything. I think it takes... Uh, you know, I'm divorced myself and she's been through a few divorces and kind of had me start all over a few times just as much as I have. Um, 
but one of the things is like her resilience and her yes. love for her children because you know my mom was an immigrant here in the states uh received her residency back in the 80s i think there was some type of um amnesty or something yeah. where a lot of people just went ahead and received their um, residency and um she moved to a place across the country that she didn't know and in a matter of two to three months we had our own place you know our own apartment it didn't have anything it didn't have much i remember um my bed would be like una playa and i was so happy i would like make my playita and my like you know because we, were, we like, don't know we don't know the difference we don't know yeah. the difference and it was uh and we were just happy because we were together and that's all that really mattered. Right. And then she taught herself how to drive. She didn't know how to drive. She got her own. I mean, I remember she bought a car for <laughs> she bought a car first and she like put us in the back. She was like, uh, you know, Marenze porque I don't know what I'm doing. And she's in her head. She was like, you know, now I was like, mom, that was kind of dangerous. You didn't, And now she was like, you know, I wasn't going to be like not careful with you guys in the backseat. Like it, I had to find something that one, you know, would kind of help me be more careful. And two, like I, we had needs. We, I, we couldn't just keep doing public transportation, you know. Mm-hmm. And so she learned how to drive. She got her own license. Then, you know, she bought a house and then it was her next car. And then it was her putting, helping us through our, all our life or school or whatever. And, you know, recently retired at a very young age. She was 57 when she retired and went back to Mexico where she's right now. And oh my God. Like, I, I always tell her, I want to be, I want to be you when you grow up. So she's been at like three years now in Mexico. I think she turned 60 this year. So, um, we're excited to do something really nice for her, but she's just an inspiration, you know, and, um, where, where is she from? So we're from Guerrero, but most specifically Acapulco. So we're right from the coast, yes. um, which is a lot of why our products are very kind of beachy or some of the things, you know, in that sense. Um, what's, so, what's your mom's uh, name? If I could ask. Yeah, Otilia. Otilia, you do mention her on your website. So my the name Becalia in itself yes. is a mix of names of my mother, my grandmother, and my daughter. And so my abuela is Rebecca, my mom's Otilia, and my daughter is Aliyah. So I just wanted to, you know, honor the three most important people in my life and how can I like continue the legacy without them? So that's kind of how Becalia started. Yeah. <laughs> that is so beautiful oh my god this is why i wanted to have you girl like because i knew that there's so much love that went into everything that you're doing and your name is so unique um and i i that's the part that i wanted to know oh my god i got chills i tengo oh. la garganta. like i love that <laughs> your mom is amazing and I can tell yeah. that she raised one hell of a woman Aww. with you. <laughs> and now I see where you get your perseverance from. I, yeah, I mean, God, you have to be so proud of yourself growing. Yeah, uh, I being proud of I think it's one of the things it's like we always have or at least for an entrepreneur, you always have like at least for me, the worst imposter syndrome. And oh, I always yes. feel like all short of, you know, and um you know, I hope that just whatever I do now can make her proud and under, and know that her sacrifices didn't go um, unseen and that we are but, oh, not just myself, but my brothers were just trying to build a legacy for all our family, to, you know, and the children to come and all those, you know, those things. My daughter's uh, in college now and, you know, we're waiting on nephew things. So as, that but- blows my <laughs> mind. That blows my mind because Jasmine, can I ask you, how old are you? I thought you were like 30, girl. <laughs> Thank you. I hope people keep saying that, but no. Girl. I'm 38, so I'm, you know, pretty... I'm Where almost, does he meet? I'll be 39 this year at the end of the month. So At the end of the year, sorry. I'm a Sagittarius, a December baby. But yeah, I'm 38. But I started life really young, so I feel like it also was like... 
I, 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 it felt even more lonely because a lot of the people that surrounded me didn't have the same type of life experiences that I had, you know, um, my parents got divorced, not on great terms. Um, life was really rough after, um, it was pretty rough after I got married when I was like 17. And, oh my um, God, my you daughter. were a baby, girl. Yeah. What? <laughs> I, got, I got married when I was 17 and I had a really, really bad, um, it was a shotgun wedding, but you know, it, it was what it was. But I got, a, I had a really bad pregnancy and I had my daughter early when I was eight, by the time I was 18. Um, and then I got divorced by the time I was, I think right before I tw turned 22 is when my divorce finalized, but I, I left my ex-husband when I was 21. And then I was pretty much on my own. And there was a lot of other like crazy personal stuff going on. And I started just from scratch and started all over, started my career, you know, all these different things. And so I'm, you know, by the time I was 27, I had already bought my first home, already had all these different things that a lot of people my age weren't there yet. And, you know, and here's, and I'm doing the parent teacher conferences and PTAs and doing all the things that, that I know that I was doing, you know, really young for my age. And so, um, I was also blessed enough to be able to find a community of also other, you know, Latinas that were older because our kid, by the time that like our kids were going to school, they were a little older because they started, you know, they were having kids in their thirties and not, you know, and I had kids like uh, 10 years before that. So, um, I, I really had a really great community of people that I could like rely on and um, ask questions for. But I've also been just because I've lived so much and gone through so many things. Um, it, it also it's really hard sometimes to look at the um, at the accomplishments and the things that, you know, everybody else sees because we just see we know how hard it was to get here and we just see the struggle. Right. And it's like, oh, it still hurts. It's still painful. And I'm still doing it and I'm still trying and I'm pushing and I'm hustling and um, just trying to figure out where we're kind of like life goes. So, um, but yeah, Aaliyah's now in her second year in college and I'm going to go to state. Um, I'm super proud of her. You know, she lives out on her own with her friends and she, uh, she's, I always tell her I don't deserve her. I think um, she taught me how to be a mom more than, you know, than I taught myself, I think. Um, and we kind of raised each other. You yes. know, we have this really amazing relationship that is really different from the relationship that I have with my mom. You know, I think for a, lo a long time, I was really resentful about a lot of things with my mom, just like things I didn't understand. Right. And it wasn't until I had my own children and went through my own other stuff that I realized like, Oh, like she did what she could with what she had, you know? And, um, and that's all that we really can do. So I, you know, I'm just really kind of proud of my mom, proud of my kid. And girl, just you, you are, you are a reflection of your family and God, it seems like you have a beautiful family. You're very blessed. If you could right now go back to the Jasmine at 17 years old, 18, 19, 20, going through what you went through, because I'm pretty ah, sure we don't even have enough. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough time to discuss everything that you've been through. Right. Um, yeah. But if you could go back and tell her one thing, what would you tell that Jasmine? Ah, these things make me really emotional. Um, it's because I also believe like in some way we do kind of talk to our younger selves. Yeah. Like yeah. obviously I feel like it goes through like space time. I always feel like when you grow up and you have that little voice that a lot of times we think it's our, it's, you know, our conscious mm -hmm. conscious. I feel like it's really ourselves in the future. I know this is really woo woo and weird, but uh, it, that's why when you said it, it brings because I remember saying things or I'll say things where I'm like, oh, you know, it's going to be OK. Like, it's going to be OK. And I know that it's really, really, really hard. And I know that it's just um, you, you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. No, you don't. Um, but you will be fine. And just keep your head, you know, head up and sigue luchando. You know, one thing my mom told me after my divorce I remember after I um, got divorced, I was just really upset more because of like 
the life choices I made and you kind of also feel like you, um, you wanted this life, the house, the white picket fence, and then it just didn't happen. Right. And, um, I always describe it. Like if you go through like a tornado, right mm, where mm-hmm. you don't even know what the hell happened and you're kind of like looking, and you're like how did i get here like what happened and i remember just being like is this my life like yes. what am i gonna do? i remember being like what am i gonna do my daughter had just turned three you know yeah. i was like here i have to get on my hip you know this and that and i remember my mom being like you know moms and their tough love yeah. and she would be like no it doesn't mean she's like no eres ni la primera ni la ultima and that really like hit me of being like, I'm not in this, uh, you know, there, it's, I think there was a lot of shame and, and all of these course. different things of like divorce and all. And because for a long time, I, I feel like I did try to prove people wrong be like, no, yes, it's going to work. And, you know, then when it didn't, it was like, how am I going to face the world and the mm-hmm. family and everybody else, you know, and um, kind of going through a lot of those like feelings and emotions yeah yeah no yes girl i'm so glad you're speaking on it because somebody could be (laughs) listening right now that is either going through it or has gone through it and you know can relate to that because especially in the hispanic community i feel like there's so many tales like that i i have primas that have gone through what you've been through and you know when we talk about it i'm like girl you are resilient like I know and sometimes, you know, the feedback that you get from your family is not always positive because they don't know how to talk to us with love. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I always try to be that prima to encourage them. Right. Like, no, yeah. girl, look at what you've done. Your kids are in college now. You're happy. You're finding your way. You know, it doesn't matter that you're 40 and just finding what you're passionate about. Like there's no way. It's never too late. There's no age limit. When I was going to college, I was going to college with this. Oh, my God. Bless his heart. It was this little old man. He was like 80 girl with his little backpack. And he like he was oh, just yeah. so cute. And I was super proud of him. You know, like uh, he was in my math um, course. And I'm like, th- like, how amazing is it and how inspiring it is for people that are like, you know, in any type of age to still go after their dreams and it doesn't matter what you've been through it's how you take it and how you move forward which is like my whole purpose of this podcast like we are all carrying something yeah all of us in one way or another yeah and it's finding you know it's finding that rainbow right it's finding that light at the end of the the tunnel because you know, yes, my, I do focus a lot on family and, and things that make me happy when it comes to Becalia and my brand. Um, but it doesn't mean that it was like butterflies and kisses and flowers the whole time. There is a lot of generational trauma. There is a lot of, you know, things that people don't want to talk about or things that, you know, but it's like, what those things are not, I, I survived those things and, and at the same time, I did have a family, even if it wasn't my entire family, but I had this little group of people from like my mom's side of the family that really supported me throughout the way. And they continue to do so. I mean, they're the ones who kind of helped me take the 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 um, the leap of faith even recently, leaving my full time career and kind of really focusing on Micalia and you know, my, I was in Acapulco, um, for my cousin's wedding. And I remember her sister was like, you know, Tamara, she was like, you know, ¿Qué lo que, qué va a pasar? No pasa nada. So, you, you know, okay. Then you start over. It's not like you haven't done it again. You know, no, pa- she, I remember her just being like, no pasa nada. And for a while it was just like, you know, it's not like I haven't heard it before, but it was just like the right moment, the right time at the right location and with the right person that it just took these, you know, these sometimes small little words and, 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 and just advice is sometimes a thing that you need to just say, you know, si puedo. Y este, no sé cómo lo voy a hacer, pero lo voy a hacer. So by you saying that, um, I've interviewed, I've had the pleasure of interviewing other entrepreneurs and women that are just 
blazing it. You guys are just amazing. I look up to you guys, each and every one that I've interviewed and that I hope to interview in the future. Um, y algo que me llamó ahorita mucho la atención de lo que dijiste es, talk about the first time something went wrong. Because I'm sure there's been like so many mix-ups, girl. But I feel like we are so scared to fail. And sometimes yeah. that holds us back. And you Without mess up. Failure, there's no success because you don't really understand what success will be if you don't understand failure. And a lot of times we use failure as as, as a crutch. Yes. Um, you know, and we're sometimes really scared. And so we just kind of avoid it. I always call it like I get sometimes really overwhelmed or really scared about something new or something's going on wrong, you know, that it like paralyzes me, you know, I don't even know what to do, what I, you know, but I also feel like mothers are the best entrepreneurs. I think that we have a resilience in ourselves. We have project management skills. We have chauffeur skills. We have manufacturing skills. You want a button? So not do we will do it all because of our children, you know? And so these are the type of things that we don't think about as being an entrepreneur until later down the line. And even some people still to this day, they're like, Oh no, I'm a mom. And then I'm a entrepreneur but i feel like being a parent really gives you that resilience right it teaches you how to deal with little itty bitty unruly customers like your kid <laughs> who don't like anything you know and how to be gentle with them and it in turn teaches you how to be gentle with the world you know how you treat strangers i think it's a reflection of who we are as people and so i don't know like i feel like uh like being a parent has definitely helped me just have more resilience. You know, when I, one of the biggest, uh, hardest impacts for Becalia was during the pandemic, we, I had a really amazing deal and I had to make, I think it was like 20,000 units oh. of one car clay masks. And I was like, yes, we can do this. And we had plenty of time to do this. And so with the pandemic hitting, contracts are signed. This is what I used to call the big boy leagues, right? Yeah. It's like, this is what we wanted. Okay, let's do this. And still doing, I was literally doing all this out of my home because I didn't have anywhere like to, it was just crazy. And everything was fine. And I, I had other con big contracts of bigger, of big units ordered, but not as big as that one. And so we were working throughout the fall and winter and waiting and waiting on supplies and ingredients mm. and waiting and waiting and it was about three weeks before the entire thing was due before we got the one oh thing the one thing that we could that we needed in order to even just start and that that means I only had three weeks and you know, they were like, you'll be charged like 20, 10% of this every single day that goes by, if you, you know, there was all these penalties and stuff and I couldn't get out of it. And I remember just being like, what am I going to do? And so I, we tried. And I remember that first weekend, it was my daughter brought all her high school friends and my brother and my sister-in-law came over. We had the, I mean, my neighbor um, laughs at, like, used to say, oh, I, I thought you guys were, like, cooking up drugs in there because we all had, like, our hair nets. <laughs> and, like, you know, we all had, and it was, like, clay mat, so it was, like, powder. So we, we would come outside for, like, a breather, and we're all, like, in the <laughs> hole. Or just, you know, and I was like, no, it's you can come in and check us out. But, um, <laughs> but we worked really, really hard. And we only got like 400 units that whole weekend. And I remember being like, I, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make this. And <gasps> there was a lot of crying, a lot. And then, you know, I would like dig myself in a hole and then be like, you know what? But let's just uh, day and night, day and night, I worked tirelessly. Uh, the girls would come after, they were in high school at the time, right after school. They would come during their Christmas holiday break. They're at my house every single day. I had teenagers everywhere feeding them. Like it was, it was bananas <laughs> and it was crazy. And we were only three days late. We completed the 20,000 units. 
oh by a miracle of the universe. And they thankfully didn't charge me any late fees, <laughs> but I still had to pull a lot of strings at in order to get certain things and get things done and pay people to help me complete this order that I didn't really make any money off of it. Right. And so for me, that, that was a big financial failure. But, that. Uh, but because I, what you just yeah. said, you know what I'm thinking? The comments or the, the feedback that you get from customers or potential customers where it's like, that's too expensive. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, I just spent weeks like I'm going crazy and it's yeah. it's devaluing um, the time that you put into it. You know, yeah. I discussed this many times and I love to bring this up all the time. If you don't like the price of something, you don't That's have something. It's not for you. Yeah. How many of us go into Chanel and tell them that their purses are too expensive? Oh, for sure. But nobody like says they're like, oh, well, then you can't afford it, you know. But I, I think, too, we live in this like such like, you know, it's America's capitalism. Right. And I, and then it's what can you get? What, how much can you get for the least amount of money? And it's no fault. I don't think it's fault of like society in itself. I think it's just, you know, as we know, it's just something that, um, unfortunately not everybody is in the economic space to, or the, you know, have the, fin the financial ability to be able to afford certain things or, you know, you either eat or you put something on your face. Like of it's course. just, I, understand. I totally understand. But like you said, it, I think that once people really realize the effort that it goes behind, behind every product, how long it, you know, how people will be like, Oh, why don't you just bring out this new product? I'm like, do you know how long it takes to create a new product, get it tested you know, then the labeling, then photography, then this, and I'm like, it's a year before, and yeah. it's a lot of work, yeah. you know, um, I know I, I've done stuff where I, you know, just, a lo, lo que sea, I just take something out and it's just, it's not, I don't feel connected to the product. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's me. Um, it's like a baby. And, you can't just have a baby from one day to the next. You have to, no, no. you have to practice, you know, you got to do it. And then, you know, you got to wait for it to cook. The same thing with products I see, you know, and I just and then I wanted to cry and poops all the time. And then you're like, ah, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, but I want to highlight, you know, I, I completely understand. Girl, I've been in the position where I've interviewed amazing women. I always think of because they're still on my wish list someday. Cadena Collective. I don't know if you've oh, heard yeah. of them. Yeah, I follow her on social. And yes. So I, love, I interviewed love. the sisters. Amazing girls. Love their store. I can't afford a piece. Yeah. But I was, you know what? I'll support them. I'll leave them comments. I'll like it. I'll share it. I'm not going to sit there and cry because I can't afford a shirt. So that's yeah. all I'm saying. You know, we can't always afford everything, but that doesn't mean that we have to hate or minimize the work that goes into it. Yes. And I think if people really took the time also to see what is in their over commercialized products, that yes. they'll realize that they're even paying too much for that product. Right. Like you have a bigger corporation that has all this money and 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 resources and tools that small businesses don't necessarily have. Mm -hmm. um, we saw that during the pandemic, they were getting preference on supplies and the smaller yes. people because they're going to want the, you know, thousands and hundreds of thousand dollars worth of, you know, accounts versus, oh, I just need, you know, a thousand dollars worth of something. And they're like, okay, you can wait. You know, like, yeah. I am like, we, we dealt through that through the, through the pandemic and stuff. But I think when people realize like how much does this product need to cost in order for them to pay for marketing, pay for the people, pay for the manufacturing, pay for the shipping, because all those things are made overseas. And it does cost Taxes, a lot of money. Taxes, import Taxes, fees. Like everything. You're paying employees and benefits and all that in order to like price it at the price that you have. So you're, you know, five dollar perhaps or seven you know from like a drugstore brand like facial cleanser well it probably costs cents to the dollar because you're still 
like the middle person who is selling that drugstore is still making money off that price. And the person before that is still making money. Like, so once you realize, oh my gosh, like I, I'm even, even with this, I'm paying a lot, but what does it mean? It's just something that was made in a company, you know, in, in the manufacturing exactly. plant. You, you don't, there's, you know, the, the, um, for a lot of times, sometimes the bigger corporations don't necessarily always really find ways to help our own communities and, oh. and, um, and represent them well. You know, only recently have we just started seeing this kind of burst of a lot more inclusion and diversity mm -hmm. on store shelves. And it's because, you know, we are the main consumers and we want to see ourselves represented. And I think it's important that um, we, you know, people, you know, Latina entrepreneurs, that we continue doing what we're doing because, you know, now when you take a little girl down an aisle, like they, they know that that is a reflection of themselves, an extension of themselves and that, you know, one day that they could do it too. And, yes. Yes. you know, I think that we're just setting, you know, paving the way and perhaps not in my lifetime. I'll say, you know, I'm always hoping, but, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, in, in, in the future, it's, you know, we'll look at shells and, and it's, it's going to be a reflection of what the United States really is. And it's just a melting pot of different cultures and backgrounds and, um, and just people embracing people for who they are, yes. you know, and not necessarily for a political statement or, you know, just to get some marketing dollars. So, um, yeah, to me, it's important that we continue staying true to our brand and, just telling these stories and to our that community. We forget. Yeah. Yes. And to our community, because I always say that I rather girl like, you know, because I'm looking at your at your website right here. That clay mask. Is it the charcoal detoxifying? Clay yes. Mask? There's a charcoal and then there's a hibiscus. Yes. OK, so I'm looking at that. You guys, it's eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars. And to me, that's cheap. To yeah. me, maybe somebody doesn't have those $18 and that's OK. I'm not judging you. How much is and I'm not going to mention the brand because I'm not getting paid. You're not paying me either, <laughs> but oh, they're not here. Um, yeah. <laughs> but there was a mask that went really, really big a couple years ago due to the YouTube uh -huh. influencers. Girl, that yeah. mask is like $60. And the thing is like this big. Yeah. And Crazy. I really wanted it. I really, really wanted it because I was like, oh, my God, like that, you know, everybody was um, raving about it. But I, I just couldn't see myself spending yeah. sixty dollars. And I looked up who who were the owners. I, I went back and I was like, I'm not giving them my money. Yeah. So like, who I, are the actual investors? Who are the actual yes. owners? What do they exactly stand that? for? Yeah. What do they stand for? Where's my money going back? Because we work hard for our money, especially yeah. the Latino community. I think we're taken for granted so many times when we are the hardest working people. 100%. We are the ones that pay in full. We do not like having debt. We pay cash. Yeah. And we are overlooked many of the times. So yeah. when I look at that, I'm like, $18. I'm like, amazing. I want that. I want to get it for myself. And knowing that it's going to go back to a Latina, that then, you know, you're going to create more things with it, that you are giving back to the community, sold. Yeah. I rather, no, yeah, I, I rather spend it there. And that's just an example, right? Yeah. No, I continuously, one of the things that I really want to continue doing. So over the years, we have done a lot of different price adjustments and quantity adjustments because I really wanted um, everybody to feel like it was something that was just attainable for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I continuously try to work with our suppliers and, um, and just try to figure out, you know, strengthening a lot of those relationships to find ways to just continue making perhaps some of these other products are already kind of grandfathered in or it's really hard for us to get better deals on. But any new future um, kind of products that are to come, I really want to just make it more attainable and affordable for everyone. I, I want 
everyone in our community to feel like they have the opportunity to purchase and to try it and to, you know, and to experience the same thing everybody else is. Because I remember also being younger and and always wanting the new things that was out and I couldn't afford it, you know. Yeah. So um, making, trying to make our skincare line really affordable, trying to find ways to reformulate while keeping um, the uh, the products as a continue, you know, con- making them as effective as possible while keeping them natural and at the same time not taking away the potency is like really, it's, it's a hard thing to do, but it's something that I'm really committed to doing, especially as I continue growing and evolving. I think a business ownership, especially Becalia, has always been an extension of myself. And as I learn, grow, and evolve, so does Becalia. You know, we've had a few looks, a few rebrands. Our story um, has changed just a little bit, but I feel like we're at a place where we got something really great, and I just want to continue growing on that. And um, and yeah, like right now, we're going through just a really uh, a campaign where I'm just really reaching out personally to a lot of our customers that have, you know, been life customers with us or even new ones and just really getting their honest feedback on our, on our um, products and what they want to see more from us. What are we lacking in? What are, you know, what just like, how can we make um, the engagement and just our connection better? Because I do feel that people care about where their products are coming yes. from especially coming from you know another poc maker they really want um like you said i want to know where my money is going and i want to know what they stand behind and and i and i'm very like first person when it comes to a lot of our marketing and you know i show up a lot on our social media because i also think it's really important that people see the person behind the brand it's me it's i'm the one doing all that. i'm the one spamming <laughs> you with emails and i'm the one like trying to make money and i you know, and showing all the good, the good, the bad. I mean, I've shown myself literally crying my eyes out. Yeah, like, yeah. what am I going to do? Um, and there's also things that, you know, people don't see that a lot of times it's like just a struggle of entrepreneurship. And it's I always call it the roller coaster. You know, the highs are really high and the lows are really low, but you just don't seem to be in between much long because you're just yeah. heading one way or the other. You it's, know? it's a roller so, coaster. You said it best. Yeah. It's a roller coaster that you really don't know. And as customers, I feel like, you know, looking at what you have, you have a range of choices girl like you have oils you have candles you have wax melts you have jabones the cocoa um milk bath thing yeah it's like my favorite i want yeah. that so bad um <laughs> it's so good it's I so good the bath couples are I don't really even great have, i don't even have a deep um the bath, the bath bathtub but oh girl I'll, I'll put my legs in there if i have to right um i really a lot of them it. our customers use it for their children so i made sure that i like balance out the ph so that we're okay you know lady parts yes um, but um a lot what of big uh, brand does that what big, what? Brand, what big brand does that I don't, I don't know, but you know, I use my products and I need to make sure that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. I love taking baths. It's my like evening r- ritual that, you know, I can come from the gym, I'll shower and then I'm like, Oh, I just need to soak in it, you know? And it's all, so it's just my only time to just be with myself, reflect on my day. Um, and I think that it's also important that we kind of show a lot what these kind of rituals can be for especially people in our community because we never have time, right? We're always, we're either moms or working or hustling. We got to figure everything out. There's the no husband, time. The house, in the, tub. the bills, you know, yes, girl. My mom would be like, don't be no corriendo el agua tan, like there's no bath in this house. Yes. Like that's money. Like, you know, yes. you're always on the go and it's like, you know, sometimes it's okay to take pause even if it's for a moment even if it's for half an hour whatever it is or even it's for that moment that you're putting on our body butters that smell like you know like mango or pistachio or whatever and it's just reflecting on your day reflecting on your week and just really taking appreciation and taking a moment to just breathe and pause and 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 just kind of see what your your um you know, where your, where your gratitude lies on that day, because I think it's important. We forget all the time. And it's just that one moment of peace that we have. Yes. So I have, I have a complaint. I need that body, body butter sampler. 
That's what I need. <laughs> I need that to be back in stock. Um, because is, yeah. it, is it out of stock? Hold on. It should be in stock. Oh, it is in stock. Okay, so I'm yeah. getting that for sure. <laughs> the I'm oh, sorry, the one that's uh, sold out right now is the bath truffle bundle. I need that too. Yeah. Girl. Yes, that is I love my jamoncitos and I, I want to try you know, all of them. <laughs> the bath truffles um, were originally the inspiration for the bath truffles where it was like the experience. I wanted people to experience what it was like to go into a panaderia. Um, oh. You know, um, our original packaging were bakery bags. And because I did want you to feel like you were opening your La Vitrina and you were getting your little concha and your what, you know, we had, and I try to make a little bit different, more sense during the holidays. Um, but it was just kind of a way of, because I remember it being like, I didn't do it much here in Atlanta because once we kind of moved away from the city, we did, we didn't have it on like Latin stores or Mexican stores around us. But, um, you know, I remember being really young and going to La Panaderia and getting the charo, the tray, you know, and, you know, and my favorite, and I remember all my favorite pastries, which was, you know, the concha and las orejitas and the little pig with, I don't, I don't know, what is it? It's like, it's our gingerbread, like our version of yeah, gingerbread. Yeah, yeah, el puerquito, you know? el puerquito. El puerquito. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and like just kind of some of these things that, um, that I, I wanted people to n- like, I don't like have them experience these things without realizing that that's what they were experiencing. You know, yes. that was like my childhood and those, those sense of when you walk in and you're just like, Oh, like I want to eat all of it. Like I just want to <laughs> eat every single one of them. So Girl. that's kind of where our bath truffles inspiration kind of came from of just that's kind of your beautiful. Familiar. That is so beautiful. And see, I think, you are portraying that because I felt so connected to your brand, looking at the names, looking at the variety. Um, algo que me llamó la atención when I, when I was looking at your shop was the mini altar. And then you have the ofrenda soy candle. And I'm like, oh, my God, like this is just like I don't I don't use it personally. But it makes me remind, you know, it reminds me of like my tia's house, my abuelita's house, like. You know, and I'm like, oh, my God, like that would be such a cute gift for me to give to a family member, you know, especially like when you don't know what to give them. You're like, yeah, so that something part of that, that collection, connects. Yeah, that part of that collection was for the other Los Muertos. Um, I also have like a sugar school body scrub that, that's yes. really popular that comes out, comes out around that time, too. Um, but I wanted people you know, I think a lot of people have this like misconception that El Dia de los Muertos um, is Halloween, you know, or there's yes. something like sinister behind it and all these things. And I really wanted to show the beauty in it. And it was like the remembrance and the taking a pause and, um, you know, like our candle friend that to me, um, I really wanted a scent of almost incense and kind of when you go to like, like a graveyard in Mexico during El Dia de los Muertos yes. when you walk into your grandmother's house who has the altar and everything. I kind of wanted people to experience that. And so whenever they did experience it in person, they're like, oh, this fe- I feel connected that, or yes. somehow like because through, through in this other way that they didn't even realize, right? And um, because, you know, fortunately I've been... Uh, I've been so honored that a lot of our customers are just a mix of different diversities. And I have a lot of people who are constantly learning about our culture through our products and asking questions and being like, I didn't know that that's where that, you know, those kind of things came from. And, um, but yeah, I just try to find ways to just show our culture or traditions, um, in ways that I can really pay tribute and honor to them because at the end of the day, as, as much as, I, I, even though I was born and raised here and, and as much as, um, my Spanish is sometimes not great and all these things, I don't think that there is anything quantifiable or a checklist that makes you more Latina than somebody else. And, um, like they say, they can take us out of Mexico, but they can't take Mexico out of us. No. And it's just in our, it's in our blood. It's in our blood, girl. 
And there's something that happens once, as you get older, that I feel like it's really hard to see these things in your twenties. Cause you're just like parting it up, you know, <laughs> um, you're like, I'm free from my parents, you know, uh, but then you get older and just something makes you, I mean, I'm listening to like banda music. All I don't even know why, like, you know, yes. I, I still don't grow up around yes. it. I don't have, uh, here I still don't have a, I really don't have a lot of Mexican friends here so I'm the only one who's always like hey guys have you listened to this and all my friends are like from the Caribbean and you know Puerto Rico, <laughs> be like, okay girl you do your thing you know but um you know what's yeah, so, so funny the music that we we hated growing up I'm talking about yes. like me and my primas right the music that we hated growing up, now we use it to clean, to cook, to do yeah. our things. And we laugh at each other because we're like, because we're your age, girl. We're your yeah. age. And I remember growing up Saturday mornings and my mom was listening to Maricela y Los Bukis. Yes. And, you know, and Stupid even Bukis would wake me yeah. up, girl. Oh, my God, ese Buki. Yes. Well, my mom slamming everything back. You mean, a ver, a qué hora a levantar, you know? Yes. And, Sonora oh, yeah. Sonora Yes. Yes, yes. And, you know, um, and, and because there's always a memory, right? Whether it's your parents waking you up early and, you know, making you clean. Um, whether it's like the Christmas parties and you're like getting food ready and everything ready and, um, you know, there's certain things. I think that that there's ways to trigger really amazing feelings through scents and textures and storytelling. And um, even though it's my story, it's part of yours too. Yes. You know, and, yes. and, and and there's connection and all of that. And um, it's hard to continuously try to find ways to make everybody feel included in my story. Um, but uh, I'm very grateful for the customers that I have that um, just really are able to also find comfort, you know, in some type of euphoric memory or um, just almost just even like myself, like didn't grow up in Mexico all the time, but they can look on the shelves of their bathroom or in their bedroom and just even if it's at a glance, understand that they, they have something still part of themselves that they will never get rid of and doesn't matter where they live or where they're where they are, you know, and if I can make them feel in some way seen, you know, despite them, um, however they feel in their Latinhood, you know, um, that's like, I think the most important part of, what you know, what, you know, what I just thought of, um, I don't know if you know the singer Natalia Lafucarde. no. I don't think so. Maybe if I hear stuff, because I don't know a lot of like the name. I've been hearing a lot of, but is, are they new or no? No. So it's it's a it's a woman. She's a Mexican woman. Beautiful. Oh, she's super cute. Um, and she sings this song called Hasta la Raiz. You can look it up. Yes, I know. Yes. That's I like the like girl. I ball like a baby because you know every that's her love letter to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how big we get. Doesn't matter how far we go. The way I try it in la raíz. Oh, yeah, yeah. It gives and me it chills. And and just to kind of connect what you were just saying, um, your brand definitely does that. You're doing that, girl. Do not change what you're doing. You are doing amazing. And we don't all have the same story you have. But we can identify with the feeling that you have gone through. I've been there. I've felt out of place. I felt like I don't connect. I've gone as far as going to Mexico and meeting family that I had never met before because I'm trying to find myself. And so when I went into your store and I saw it, that connection was instantly. And that's I, I swear to you, that was the same day that I wrote to you. And I was like... I want to get to know you. Please come on my podcast. Like, pretty please. Um, because I'm like, if I feel that, I'm sure many others can feel that as well. So don't, yeah. do not change anything that you're doing, girl. Just continue to thrive. Um, 
I can't wait to order stuff. I seriously oh. cannot. Um, I really want to support you. I want you guys to just go check it out. Even if you can't afford some, but something, there's gift cards that you Fair, can get. Follow us on social. Like, yes. all, all the little things count, you know. Um, I, I, I'm looking at every all the tags and all the, you know, I'm the one behind our social media. And, you know, people have questions. They can DM us. And, yes. Um, Oh, I she don't. answers very quickly. Um, I think you took maybe like 24, 48 hours and you answered to mm-hmm. me. Um, she, you guys, I'm telling you, there's things, the wooden note cards. I, oh my God, I need like one of each because yeah. I can give one to my husband. I can give one like to my friend. Like, it's just, you guys, there's so much love into this brand she's not paying me to say this i am saying this out of my heart this is the first time that we meet jasmine yes and thank you so much you're the sweetest and you know uh your honesty is so appreciated and those are the things that like a lot of times we need to hear because like we are the on ourselves and i'm always questioning you know is the path i'm you know is my messaging right what am i doing what am i not doing and we always um feel like we're falling short but hearing um you know like your story and and how you connect with the brand it just kind of really gives me an additional motivation to keep going and moving forward please do girl i'm hoping that you know that i think we always want us to be impactful in some way for me um yeah i want to eat so i definitely want sales but at the same time i think it's more important um i think i've said this a lot and in, in even on our website is i think it's more important about how we make people feel and if we can encourage people to feel seen and feel accepted um regardless of their background then it only makes them be a better human being to the rest of the world. You know, yes. again, how we treat strangers is definitely a reflection of who we are as a society and people. And the kinder we are to people and more inclusive we are, they can turn around and pay it forward, you know? And yes. so that's you, kind of- No, what you're doing, girl, I, I love it. I want to tell everybody about Becalia. I love the name. I love the story. I love you. You you are just amazing um, woman. I really look up to you. And I hope that you you understand that. I I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, I really, really look up to you. And I admire everything that you're doing. Um, I thank you so much for sitting down with me. This is your platform. Whenever you have new products or you just want to come and visit, girl. Please do oh. so. Um, well, if you thank ever- you so much for having me. It's been such an honor and a pleasure. And, um, you know, I love having these, like, kind of, like, one-on-one conversations. I think um, it's very different than having, um, you know, to kind of, like, prepare for, like, almost, I'd rather it feel like we're getting to know each other on a personal level versus me pitching for funding or something, you know? Like, yes, oh, yes. I, here's my facts. And this is why, you know, and it's more of like, no, here's a story and what makes Becalia what it is. And, um, you know, we're hopeful for the future and we hope your audience uh, checks us out. And yes, please do, you guys. If you guys subscribe to the website, you get 15 percent off. So if you need, yeah. you know, a little bit of saving please do it if you can support her fully then please do it if you cannot buy at the moment it's okay you can still support her by following her on social media by liking by sharing spreading the word goes such a long way and i always tell you guys this on my episodes but to me it means a lot for for the audience to really know how much that little heart means for us how much that little comment means how much that sharing that post means and it's free things that you can do to support other latinas um and by hearing her story i love the fact that she was so vulnerable with us that she was able to tell us the love that has gone into like every product that i brought up to you girl i love that you give me the story behind it 
Like if we had, you know, 10 hours to do, oh yeah, I, I, I would sure love to go through story. like every <laughs> single product because it, yeah. it shows me the love that you've put into it. And that's the love that I feel when I visit the shop. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, so, so good. Thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, so you guys, please go follow her. If you guys are watching us on Spotify or on YouTube, somewhere around here in the in the screen you guys will find her handles her name everything um if you guys are just listening to us on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, wherever you guys are listening from go to the description box in the description box i'm gonna have the website her handles everything so you guys can connect um and i can't wait to share with you guys when i actually receive my order i can't wait to hear what you think yes <laughs> and i actually open it um so you guys can can also go to my personal social media because that's where i do it and then of course you guys will be listening parts of the clips of this on social media for two weeks when i take out interviews i cut them up so that people can really connect and and get to know what the interview is about so i can't wait jasmine i yeah, just can't wait i'm excited i'm excited to hear what you what you think about our products and yes. you know, and, and your audience too just I, I hope that they um you know they find comfort in our brand as well and and just yes. feel seen and accepted oh my god you know it, it just it, right now that you're saying that it it, it I'm so hopeful for the future for you. Like I want to walk into Target. Right now my Target is getting um remodeled. Oh, okay. So, you know, everything's looking shiny, new lights. They put an Ulta in there. It's still under construction <laughs> though. It, it looks so different now that you walk in you're like Tarte, is this you? Yes. <laughs> they really stepped it up. But they like, don't I, want us to leave that store. That's what it is. They don't want us to leave that store. And probably, <laughs> probably. Um, and so, you know, we're getting renovated, but I would love to walk in there one day and see Becalia. Oh, man, that would be amazing. <laughs> and just put her in my brand. So Target, if somebody from Target, if somebody has any connections, please get us to Target yeah. because, yeah. girl, you never know. You never know. And I hope know. in the future, te deseo lo mejor. Te doy muchísimas gracias. Your mom, tell her she's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I tell her all the time. I know she's, she's a of course, goddess. Thing she is, but she, chef's kiss. I love her to death. <laughs> she's an amazing woman. She really yeah. is. Um, but thank you so much for listening, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Go check them out, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. I want to hear your story or I want to support your small business. To do so, please go ahead and visit embracingmymarkings.com. Thank you for tuning in.